Hello everyone, this is Sheldon from Shell Rock Art. Welcome to my channel. I am uh, pretty enamored right now because I have 1,000 subscribers today. And it was so pretty cool because it's my wife clapping in the background. It was so pretty cool because um, I got a few notables. Um, I know I wouldn't have gotten my channel started if it wasn't for two people, um, Erica Hughes and um, Garrett Brown. They really gave me the confidence to actually start the channel. Then once I started, they gave me support. Uh, Mandy from Hope Designs uh, gave me a lot of support. And then I got some great support from a lot of uh, new artists with new channels like um, Britta Clayton, um, G from G Pours, um, even the countdown to my uh, thousand subscriber from um, Cy Frost from Frosty Eye Candy. It's so many individuals. And then, of course, the old school uh, artists that I learned a lot of techniques from, like uh, Tammy Anderson Art and um, Karen from Waterfall Acrylics. And of course, a lot of my colors, I'm very thankful for because Leslie from uh, Color Art, Leslie Onstar from Color Art has given me a, a lot of uh, support and um, there's so many names I could mention, but you know who you are because I've spoken with you either directly or um, indirectly. So thanks again for helping me get to this point in uh, pouring because I really like the way um, this art has become very therapeutic, especially during the time of COVID. And I'm talking to you this whole time while I'm cleaning paint off my easy to peel off um, contractor bag that lines my puppy pool. So tonight I'm going to be doing a uh, deconstructed bloom on this 12 by 16 canvas. I didn't want it too long because I'm only going to do two blooms. I'm not going to do three. And I'm going to tilt it, tilt it from side to side and get some, well, hopefully get some nice um, composition off of these two blooms. And I'm using blues, different shades of blue and a gold and a black cell activator. So I don't have the blues today because I'm happy for the success. However, I'm using the blues. So it's the opposite today. So let me get started by pouring my pillow down. This is Glidden Premium. I thinned it down with some water so it can flow. And I'm just going to give it a nice uh, coat like that. Nothing too far to, to the edge because I'm gonna have to do some tilting, but I think that's good enough from the time I, actually from the time I start blowing it out. So I'm going to do one bloom, blow it out, and then I'll do a second bloom blowing out. Then I'll do the tilt. So maybe the first one I'll do from here, a little bit to the side, not quite in the center. And this one, or this technique, I was really clarified, but I really understand the whole pro uh, process of deconstruction. And that shout out goes to Karen from Waterfall Acrylics. She really helped me to understand some of it. And it's not as easy as she makes it look, but 
it's worth giving it a shot. It's become easier for me, but I still got some work to do as far as perfecting it or mastering it as it were. Just different shades of blue. I can't even give you the names of some of them because some are mixed and just some of them I just um, forgot the names and I did not label them. So I'm sorry. This is, as uh, my man Darren Nixon calls it, this is kind of a quickie. tilt this back. I don't want that to run off too much to the side. So clearly I'm blowing mostly in this direction when I blow it. So This is not um, what do you call it? Level canvas right now. So hopefully it will start drifting back this way now that I got it on this side. So let me get a little bit more of that contrast of that. Now I'll add, hopefully I got enough for the second. Yeah, shit. Nope, I'm gonna leave that one here. So I will give it some gold. So I the it first. Nice good amount. And then I'll give it some black. Solar activator. I like making sure I have a good amount of solar activator on there because I do want the coverage. So let me blow this out first. second bloom and I'm going to do it on this side here like right around here maybe down here a little bit to get it get this little monster off here so close to the edge. But that black and gold is rocking it. I'm loving it. So. Again. So I think I had Byzantine, um, I think that's Fantasia, Be Mine, and I think this is Blue Flame. And my wife giving me the thumbs up of how pretty this is turning out. This is from Pebio, this is Iridescent, um, greenish blue or blue green I think it's blue green one of the two but it's iridescent from Pebio this is nebula star and I'm only saying this out loud so that when I put it in the description box I'm able to remember exactly what I did 
And again, well, this sank pretty nicely too. That, that really collected pretty nicely. The gold and then the black cell activator here. You definitely want to make sure your cell activator is um, thin enough. Now, the funny thing about blooms and um, paints that react, it's a two-part um, process. So it's not just about the, uh, it's about the composition, but it's not just about the chemistry of it, but there's some physics that's involved too. I know sometimes when we watch videos and we try to find recipes and all, that's a lot of focus on the chemistry of the whole pouring experience. But there's also a What I call it? What did I call it before this? Um, the physics of it. Um, so, like having your canvas leveled, or um, where you place your puddles, as opposed to how you're going to tilt it. Watching the weight of the paint, um, the force when you if you're doing some spinning the centrifugal force or how big your cells are going to get based on how thick off the canvas your pillow is. So there's a lot that's involved and it's not just about only chemistry. So since I'm going to move some of these colors around, let me punch this down a little bit and kind of go, let me go toward this corner first since I got more things to that corner anyway and i'm going to spill that off and i'm gonna pull this back to get a nice cool lace design here and then that's going to crunch on top of each other there and i do want a lot of this negative space so the whole point about the deconstruction is you actually uh, break up the bloom. And you kind of bust it up a bit as you're tilting it, tilting it. But you come up with a nice, uh, lovely piece when you're done. That's the whole purpose of the whole deconstruction. So then I can pull this back and see how those colors are now stretching in this direction. Even though this is shortening up down here, this up top is stretching out. So I can pull this back and now I can work on some of that composition. So I'm gonna tilt it back this way, tilt it back down a little bit back towards me because I don't want to lose a lot of that color just until I can go back down to this corner right here and tilt some of this off the color corner and bring it back up without losing a lot hopefully that'll work for me good I just wanted to get just enough off now back to the composition so I'm trying to tilt it slowly. Again, that's one of my 
things that I need to work on is tilting. But overall, this is um, kind of turning out to be a nicer piece. I'm getting actually proud of this one. So, lastly, I'm gonna go a little bit more off that corner there and then pull it back. Right. Now it's got some nice uh, composition, some negative space going through that center and the diagonal. But yes, I'm very happy with that one. So let me rinse my fingers off and get, a, get you down for a closer look. Hello everybody, I'm back again. And this time I'm gonna use the same colors as I did for the deconstructed bloom. Um, as a normal bloom that I'm gonna spin out. And maybe I'll have these side by side on the wall as I set. So let me um, do the same thing. I'm gonna pour the colors down. I mean, pull my pillow down. The colors. And then I'm going to uh, blow it out. And then Spin this puppy out. I adjusted my consistency on my black selector bed and I think it kind of really started lacing up a lot. So I'm kind of happy with that. And also I can use like, the rest of this old paint as well. So this is the Byzantine. It's like a a pale bluish gray. It's not bright blue, but it's pale. But it still adds a nice contrast as well. This is, I think, from the Glass Wings collection. This is the Fantasia, which is like a light violet blue. And see how I'm laying everything on loosely? This helps me get those multicolor cells that um, many um, artists ask me about. But yeah, I lay it on loosely so that the other colors can come through. As Karen will call it, she calls this like a messy, a messy pour. This is the Be Mine, which is, has like a turquoise feel to it. You see it's not level, cause all my paint's running off that side. So now I'm trying to bring this back to this side. So it could probably hopefully run that way. This is the rest of my blue flame. And this is nice to get rid of some old paints so you can start off fresh. And it seems like you never get rid of your old paints because you want to paint so much. You have to try different colors. And those older colors, just sometimes you just have like a little bit of one color and you have a little bit of another color. And they're very close in shade. And then they'll combine those two colors together. I said, okay, well, what the heck? I'm going to do it anyway. And enjoy your painting. So I'm contrasting the light, the dark, the light, the dark. So back to the light with the Pebeo. Iridescent uh, blue green. And so I'm going to have to, again, listen to my video in order to write up the description box. I'm not going to remember. And then get back to the dark with the nebula star. Okay. Gold cell activator. This is Amsterdam gold. 
with U.S. Floetrol that's thinned down with water. Uh, two to one ratio, two parts Floetrol, one part water. And then this is Carbon Black from Golden. And I like Carbon Black better than Amsterdam for my particular taste because it seems to sink better and it seems to be a little bit darker or black. Let's blow it out. see where that was going when I first began to blow it out. It started to like, poop, go one way. I was like, ah, can't go that way. And I started. So I had to do it lightly first from up high and then see where it was going to take me. Let me give it a little bit of a puff in the middle. Surprisingly enough, I don't have any um, spots here that I feel it's necessary sorry, to do any swirly. So my blowout was pretty good. So just like the um, deconstructed blue that this is going to pair up with, I'll leave the swirlies off of it. Thinner black cell activator gave a lot more of your um, lacing around. But you see how this black is really sinking in there? That's from that heavy body um, carbon black because the paint's much heavier. So it's sinking down and, and making a lot more of your lacing effect. These transparent colors is really getting that kind of like glow area in the middle of these cells that gives it that 3D feel to it. So yes, I'm loving that. So let's spin this puppy out. And slowly. I always say slowly because I don't want my lacing to get those um, boomerang shapes to them as it comes towards the end, end, edge of the canvas. So I have to watch exactly how far I'm stretching it. If you go too fast, This is one of those tidbits that I learned from um, Erica. See, I like all this. I got this line right here. And some of this still hasn't gotten uh, covered yet. So I give it a small spin just to see how much I can, of this little bit I can get off. Let me see if that's enough. Look, almost. A little bit more. that should do it. All right. There you have it, folks. Let me get you down for a closer look for bloom number two. This is not deconstructed. 
but I love the way the lacing just goes all over the whole canvas. And that's because I took my time to blow it out properly. So I'm gonna get you down for a closer look at both pieces and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, folks, I'm back and I'm gonna show you the final result. This is the final wet result of the bloom that I just did. That where I was saying how the lacing went all over. That black, the carbon black with the gold selectivator. So I love the way that one turned out. And then with its partner, its buddy, my first one is the deconstructed one. And that's where you get the composition of all the tilting. You still get your nice cells, nice lacing in there. Look at all that fine lacing in there. I love that. And then um, you come down to this part here which is deconstructed as well. But you got this nice diagonal area of negative space in between the uh, two blooms. One's larger and one's kind of small. But it definitely makes a nice accompaniment for this one. Although they're different sizes, it doesn't mean that in order for them to match on a wall, they have to be the exact same size. Sometimes artistically, you want a little bit of a uh, abstract feel even to how you put paintings on a wall so just just an idea and a thought when it comes to matching up colors and paintings and all and i just want to say thank you once again thank you all for subscribing to my channel please continue to give me the support i'll continue to support you shout out to everyone who has been part of this journey and i actually got well, again 1000 subscribers and i'm i'm so so very grateful for all of you so until next time happy pouring and have a very wonderful evening good night